In this video, I'm gonna cover and break down two of my favorite posters that I've made with and for Dither Boy, which are these two that I'll show you now. The main reason these are some of my favorite pieces I've done with Dithering is just because of how simple they are and because the texturing I got really worked well with the Dithering I used. So I'm gonna use Dither Boy and Photoshop here. And as always, if you are new here, if you don't know about Dither Boy, I'll leave it all linked below. This is a standalone software. It's not a Photoshop plugin. It's not Photoshop features or an action or anything like that. I'm gonna be using the version four update that we put out over summer, which was a free update for any existing users. I've uploaded a million videos about Dither Boy by now, so I'm sure you know what it is, but to save me from going over everything in this video, you can just check below the video in the description and I will leave it all linked there. To get started, I am in Photoshop and when I created this poster, we were just finishing development on ColorCat, which is obviously like the companion software that we put out for Dither Boy. So I wanted to just create something to like show both of the cat mascots basically. Um, I've got them both here. Some of the file names might be a bit mad here, but we literally for Colour Cat and Dither Boy, you've only seen a small fraction of all of the facial expressions that we designed and all the variations of the GIFs that we designed and stuff. If I, I think it's in this file, the all file. This isn't really part of the tutorial or whatever, but just because I'm trying to do like more breakdowns of my work and process, I just thought I would show you. So if you look at the layers panel on the left, this is all the stuff we've got for both cat mascots. So Dizzy White at the bottom or color cat, you can choose the shape of the head for whatever you're designing. And then you can go and pick like a mouth and pick the eyes obviously they got to be compatible and the eyebrows and we got a little halo design too when we were finishing color cat the actual software the actual functionality of how it works I had to go through and like pick the right combinations for color cat we designed these me and barbara hernandez who is a designer i work with all the time for logos and typography and these characters as well so i'll leave a link where you can have a look at barbara's work if you are interested in who did these cats with me but obviously got like some fun copy as well double the fun with dither boy and color cat and then just like the extra text here the joke here obviously being that dither boy is scared of this face coming at him with the heart eyes so i also added these hearts in the background now what's important here like if you've been learning dithering or if you've been trying to get into this stuff is understanding how this will translate when we dither it because of the luminosity and the contrast in this image so the background obviously is white so it basically won't dither it is being dithered but white just makes it through uh, as pure white pixels in most dithering algorithms in most setups that you've got and same for black, it's typically just a flat black section of pixels that come through when you are dealing with like the completely black luminosity pixels or the completely white luminosity pixels. So the interesting stuff is going to happen in between where we've got the reds for the mouth, the yellows for the eyes, and then this background for the greys. So literally all I've done here is just get the first heart, duplicate that, set the color to start with as like a light gray. And then on the duplicate, if you just hold alt and scale it up, make sure it's behind your first one and then just turn down the intensity of, of the gray. So it's a little bit darker and then just repeat that. So I repeated that twice. What you'll get here is one pattern in the dithering for the white, a second pattern for this gray, a third pattern for this gray, and then a new pattern on this third gray, which is only slightly different from the first one. And then obviously these cat heads will dither differently as well. I know it seems obvious, but if I pull this into Dither Boy and just load any algorithm here, you can see what I mean. So the, the heart shape is like what is editable now with the contrast. You can basically use contrast and all these, the other values, depth and stuff to determine what kind of patterns are going to emerge in the heart. And so if I just lower the luminance threshold a little bit, and then go into the retro color palettes and load in this hot rod color palette and then start turning the depth up. You'll see that the colors will populate. They'll distribute through the dithering algorithm into the patterns that we've got set up in the hearts. And now your contrast is going to control the color distribution and the pattern that comes through here. And you can get a ton of different variations for your dither. So for this one, if you just go file 
export, copy to clipboard, because we're working in Photoshop, you can just come back here and then start pasting in your dithering outputs. Obviously, you can see here I'm working in the PSD file that I literally made when I was creating this. So if I just delete my old exports and just paste that in, then we can go back and you can change to a different algorithm like checkers and it reacts slightly differently so you can continue messing with the depth and stuff to sort of restore some of the the color from the last algorithm For this one i think i want the scale to be up a little bit more so it's super super pixely so i'll just copy that paste and then i'm going to try a couple of different palettes as well so like some of these are, are going to pick up and be a little bit messy like the contrast aware or like if you go to like waveform dithering for this type of thing with typography and, and shapes and stuff probably not the nicest type of dither to use but you still can if you want to depending on what you're doing uh, i'm just going to try and grab a few that look like nice and clean and retro about too much going on uh, this one's pretty cool so i'll paste that one in and then um i'm going to try some from the halloween palettes so i know this is probably not the most suited to the type of design i'm doing here but this one's pretty cool and i'll just export a few more and then i'll cut to when i'm actually gonna start texturing in photoshop so i did find one with the lines that looks cool so if you go with smooth diffuse you get this smoothness slider which isn't on any of the other glitch effects in here so you can use a smoothness slider to just sort of not mask literally but you can just isolate the lines to just being mainly in the eyes or you can do something like this as well so i'm going to export that and i'm going to start texturing but the point is here if i go to my main one here that i exported when you understand how the luminosity and like the grayscale here is going to interact with the palette that you choose and the algorithm that you choose you can effectively know what this is going to look like before you start dithering that's the only real reason i'm doing a tutorial for something like this because the design is pretty simple there's not much going on here there's just like the main thing holding this together is just symmetry and we added the retro dithering and i'm gonna add some like retro texturing as well yeah the the main thing that is kind of holding this together is the mascot design the symmetry and i quite like the copy the text as well double the fun uh, i thought it was like a cool way to tell people about using color cap so my dither boy design work when i texture this stuff we're not doing anything crazy the dithering it's already a strong enough effect it's already a visible enough effect that we're not going to do any stupid like ink bleed or anything that stuff is not really even real or you know i i went on a bit of a thing about this in the last video but you can use whatever textures you want i'll put some of the textures i'm about to use in the discord so you can just grab them from there but these ones are from a pack on my site called photocopied really all you need for my texturing process that i do on my dithering work is just one light texture and one dark texture you're going to apply the dark texture with a screen blend mode or a lighten one so this one as you can see it's just a black sheet of paper with lots of ink on it the way i made these where this particular pattern came through uh was my my girlfriend at her old work there was like a really old printer there that they were getting rid of so uh, i asked her to just photocopy one sheet of paper over and over and over again until it turned black with all the ink and, and that's what this is basically and i scanned in a load of those so that's what this particular texture is but if you get any dark inky black paper and you use a blend mode from this category what these processes do is compare your texture to what is below so everything below in the layers and if the pixels in the texture are lighter than what is below it then those pixels will come through so that's why on this texture when we apply screen you can see that the white sections the lighter sections here are barely affected at all whereas these sections where like dither boys sort of shape is color cats shape and some of the pinks as well there will be some sections of pink that this applies to not super strong but this way you get your dark texture coming through where it's needed and then if you pair that with a light texture again this is just white paper and then if you use a darken category blend mode like linear burn again this is going to compare the pixels in your white paper texture and it's going to if you use one of these from this category again i've i've done a video covering the exact uh, operation for all the blend modes in the past like a year ago i think but yeah it's going to compare and then blend where it's darker basically and because you're using a light texture uh, the result of that is it's not going to like overpower or it's not going to ruin the you know the text sections or the cat heads or anything like that 
because they're already darker, if that makes sense. Anyway, this way, when you use two, you get a much more realistic output for your texturing. You can see here when we zoom in, the texture goes through. So it's not only on the cat head and then the texture just mysteriously stops after the cat head. It continues all the way through these white sections. And the texture is really just a supporting component of the design rather than something that like holds it together or is the main feature of the design. From here, all I've done is just like messed with the color in the dithering. So once you've obviously brought it into Photoshop, you can recolor it if you really want to. Now I've got that texturing set up there. I can obviously experiment with these other ones I already imported, or I can go back to Ditherboy and just keep dithering with some different algorithms, different depth sort of settings, different palettes and get something crazy like this. And then it is just as simple as copying to clipboard and then pasting it below your texturing setup and it'll apply. Obviously, if you're on a different software, all you need is the blend modes. They're like public domain, they're just algorithms. So you don't need Photoshop. Uh, there's plenty of alternatives that will just have blend modes. I'm pretty sure you could probably even do this in like Blender or whatever, if you set things up correctly in 2D. But all I did was similar design here with Ditherboy, same text, same sort of layout and everything. And when dithered with the same settings, so the hot rod palette that I showed at the start, the Ostromakov dither and, you know, whatever scale you want, really export to clipboard and then paste back in underneath. And that's how I did the second one. So now I, you might see more work from me in this exact format where it's just the cat mascot with some text and this texturing and a very particular type of retro dithering where you've just got color coming through. You know, there's no unnecessary dithering here. We're not like trying to make a whole crazy pattern in the background or anything. The dithering is like very much taking a backseat to the mascot design and the main text. Or hopefully it comes across that way anyway. But yeah, that's how I made those two posters. These are really, really simple. But like I said at the start, some of my favorite work I've done with Ditherboy. I just really like these two. I might get them printed out for when I eventually make this wall not boring behind me. But if you want to see me do more like design breakdowns of other work I've done, then just let me know. As always, more Ditherboy tutorials are coming, more Ditherboy updates are coming. We're still working on stuff. Uh, when you join the Discord, if there is a bit of a delay, I am sorry. By the way, if you missed that, it's just in extras and Discord. If there's a bit of a way, I am sorry. It's just because despite this Discord link only being here, this is the only place it exists. We just get a lot of bots and stuff, so it takes me a while to go through and verify you are a real human being. I really don't want the Discord to get ruined. For the people, once you get in, you benefit from the wait time because it means that there's not going to be some spam bots and it just keeps it like organic and not like other discord servers i don't know i feel like most discord servers for graphic design just die after a couple of weeks because it just gets full up of people who just then mute it or people who are just there to post some spam link and then get banned or anyway so yeah sorry if there's a bit of a delay i'm trying to make that better but thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video